Should we move here because there's another discussion there? Yeah. yeah, so because I was like kind of young at the time, I was like, I've got nothing to lose. Let me just worship Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, no, no, I think you spoke to a Bob. More about Islam. Finding out more about Muhammad's. Oh. Um, find out, finding out more about Muhammad's life story. I was like, I don't, I don't want nothing to do with Islam. But it was actually the main thing that led me to, um, to Christianity. You said you had an encounter. Encounter like of the Holy Spirit. I was talking about it. It was like a divine presence that came into, into me. This presence and like healed me of my illness and depression, which doctors had no, um, they didn't know what was wrong with me. So this presence pretty much cured me within three days. Okay. Be because I'm finding this interesting, like when I'm looking mm. at even Iranians. Yeah. A lot of Iranians are saying that they're having these kind of encounters. Mm. Really? And, you know, let me just say it here, I'm not religious. Mm. You know, I'm not coming from a religious perspective, yeah. but like when I'm, you know, I, I saw you had a debate here somewhere, Masu. I think it was a Sudanese guy. Okay. He asked you a few questions, mm. then he was like, you're not Muslim. Yeah, yeah. Pakistan is about 92% Muslim. Nah, you know what it is? How are you not Muslim? You come from this background, you're in this environment. <laughs> you know what it is? Because as a Muslim, you cannot leave the faith. They believe once you're in the cold Islam, you cannot leave. Yes, they so the reason, yeah, because the reason why I like to tell them I'm an ex-Muslim is to show them that Jesus Christ is real and he changed my life. Because it's a miracle, it's, it's a really big story for one to leave Islam. And it takes a miracle for something, to, for something like, to, like that to happen. Well, you see, what I'm also interested in, so I'm not going to deny what you're saying is your miracle, that's mm. not for me to deny. But what I do want to expose is that what people are saying, it's not necessarily true. Mm. I've spoken to some Pakistanis yeah. who are not Muslim, mm. right? Who come from a Muslim background. But some of them are still in the mosque. Yeah, yeah. Right? There was something that I was looking at from a doctor, he was a Muslim. And what he's actually saying is that there's people who are even leading prayer mm. in the mosque, in the masjid, as a imam. Imam, right? And they're not Muslims. I don't know about that. Most no, I, yeah. he was a doctor and he's saying people have come to him and told him this. Okay, so, so some, some um, in the Pakistani, right, they have cultural traditions where some people in the Pakistani schools, so I'm born in the UK, I was never born in Pakistan. So in the Pakistani schools, they will get told to learn these prayers, which is, which is why like, they may have led them. But being born in the UK, I have no intention to learn them. The only reason why I got told to learn them because of myself, because I was a Muslim and I wanted to pray to Allah, which is why I learned these prayers in the mosques. Yeah. There was no, in yeah. Yeah. Um, you see, it's, it's interesting as well, because from my research, mm. there are up to, I think it's 13 countries okay. with the apostasy law. Yes. If you leave this religion, you can be killed. They will kill you, yes. You can be murdered. Now, mm. my belief, my personal belief is that someone's belief and their religion or their um, connection with the creator yeah. is their personal thing yeah i don't believe that someone has the right to force someone to believe something or force someone to say that you cannot leave this religion if you leave it you should die mm. now when we're hearing this maybe i think if it's 1.6 or up to 2 billion Muslims, yeah the argument that i'm having is is that really accurate the reason why i'm asking is this accurate is because there's a lot of people who do not want mm. this religion. The other thing that I am finding out is when you look at countries that is practicing Sharia, Sharia law. many of the people have come here to England, to Denmark, to other Scandinavian countries yeah. because they don't want Sharia. That's right, yeah. So it's interesting, like, I was, you know that guy, Yunus, Yunus Rocks. Yunus, no, no. Yunus Rocks, okay. So oh, right. Yunus, yes. He did a uh, preach the other day, didn't he? Guy, yes. He, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that, yeah, yeah. So he's saying that his parents and some people's grandparents and others came here because they don't want Sharia. That's right. So when he's hearing people mm. preaching that they want this over here, he said it's totally insane. Mm. Now nah, some some Muslims they want the Sharia law. I've seen videos where Muslims have said that they are taking over the country and they have been protesting the Sharia law to happen. But those who come here 
um, that don't want the Sharia law, they're mostly cultural Muslims. They're not really into the, um, their deen. They're just cultural Muslims, and they so want. You're saying it's a lot of talk. So they 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 claim to be Muslim because of their ancestors, but they never really practice it. And okay, you're yeah, saying it's more in the culture. Like liberal Muslims, they're not really as true, truly like yes, practicing yes, Muslims, not the thing. which is why they don't want to be in the Sharia law. What is very interesting because I had a discussion with Bob a yeah. few weeks ago. I don't know if you saw the video. No, nah, I don't. Yeah, my hair is gone. Um, I'm getting bald. And um, what you he is mean? saying is that due to what you call Arabism. A lot of people have lost their culture. Right. So I was speaking with a Turk the other day mm. in um, one of my places that I go to. A bit closer, yeah. yeah. And I asked him, where's your origin? We just got into mm. some conversation. Oh no, it's just Turkey. Then he proceeded to tell me that their original language was Arabic. Arabic, okay. Yes. This is absolute foolishness, mm. right? The original if you look at the script of the Tur of Tur Tur the Turks, maybe around just over a hundred years ago, before Atta Ataturk, yeah, that script was Arabic. Yes, we know that. The script before that looks very similar to Paleo Hebrew. Okay. Right. Mm. They originate from Asia. They're Mongolian. They're of the same kind of stock. Yeah. Due to the Arabism, they have lost that part of their culture. It's just like you know, you're from Pakistan. So some of the scripts, I don't know if it's Urdu or one of them. Yeah, Punjabi it's Urdu. It's in the Arabic. Um, no, nah, yes, that's is right. It Urdu or Punjabi. So you're, wait, you're saying, are you saying that like the um, the Qaeda? Like just the way how they write is okay. the Arabic script. Okay. I mean, their no, language is not. Nah, because so a, a lot of Muslims um, in Pakistan, even though we speak Urdu and Punjabi, we are still we are still being told that we have to recite these things in Arabic. Yeah. So which is Arabization. You know, why, can, why, can't, why can't you read the Quran in Urdu? Why can't you, read, why can't you recite these prayers in Urdu? Why does it always have to be in Arabic? So that's, that's again, does Allah only know Arabic? Does he only... Is, is, is that really it, a God? It seems like it's high, like a, a God. high Arab preference. Yeah, because like God knows all languages. He, he, he won't, in Christianity, we believe God wants us to worship him in spirit and truth. No yes, matter, and he yeah. said the scriptures would be in all languages. Yes, so why do we have to worship God only in Arabic? You know, it's not really doing it in truth. It's, Arabic, it's not really a relationship with God. It's, this is something that Muhammad had invented. Yeah. Um, well, you see, I want to ask your opinion on some of the hadiths, mm. right? Now, me as a black person, yeah. there's some parts of the hadith that I read, which I have to say, hey, this is a bit... Very disgusting. Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. We find that in the hadith, Muhammad <laughs> slave traded two blacks to redeem an Arab. Mm. What's your take on this? I've heard about that before, but I haven't really looked into it. Um, yeah, yeah. But oh, I've, lo I've looked into the slavery of Muhammad um, with his black slaves, but the, the, I think the main reason why he did it was because it was to free the other slave. That's what they, they would say, but I haven't really looked into it with the, with the slavery context. Let, let's look at this. These are two pairs of trainers. Yes. You trade this for one. It's not an equal trade off, is it? No, no. So he's traded two blacks yeah. to redeem an Arab. That isn't an equal trade-off. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? But I don't know if you heard it. Have you have you heard the one where Muhammad called someone a Ethiopian raisin head? Y yes. Uh, if even if it's a what's it? Ethiopian so there was like a there's a, with a raisin head. there was a black guy or something like that, and Muhammad like called him an Ethiopian raisin head. Yes, because it's being derogatory to a black person. If you have a um, because in, in theory what he's saying is that an old black person is like the raisin. The raisin is dark brown yes. and it's like wrinkly. As you get older it's wrinkly. Yeah. So these are some of the problems that I'm having because people are teaching me that this thing is equal and it's equal for everyone. But we're seeing throughout the history of this religion, you've had a slave trade that has been carrying on for 1400 right. years, uninterrupted. The other issue that I'm having is I'm having to convince mm. and to force Muslims, black Muslims, but other Muslims to say what is going on with the blacks that are being enslaved right now That's in right, the yes. Muslim world. All over North Africa, I'm going to name some countries. Mauritania, that slave trade is still going on full. 20% they estimate is slave. Yeah. Um, Chad, Sudan, um, and some parts of the UAE. I've seen some videos where in the 60s they were leading, they were leading them in chains. I think, I think with, the, with these slaves, it's not like for me. Like um, I've seen, I've seen what Muhammad said about these black people. 
But for me, the, the, the main thing about these slaves that Muhammad had was having sex with these, the girls yes, on the slaves. Sex slavery that's the, that's the main um, negative point of slavery that Muhammad had. Has. Both are almost as negative mm. as each other. So there, there was many, uh, there was many, there's actually many verses in the like hadiths, right? I'll give you what. Yes, I've seen the one of the sex slavery where they were debating on the best way how to rape the woman. Yeah. Where it's talking about coitus interruptus, right? So now, let's, let's go. The thing uh, is, is that, for example, if I go with a woman, I need her consent to be with her. I can't force myself upon that woman. This is foolishness. Yeah. You know? I've heard in this park here, Bob who's had debates and other people who has had debates, you've had people there here agreeing with child marriage, mm. to agree to marry a six-year-old, to agree to marry a nine-year-old. What kind of foolishness is this? That's wrong, man, yeah, yeah. No, How can what's... someone make an argument to say that a nine-year-old, mm. 1400 years ago, was um, was an adult? Adult, yeah, yeah. I now, what's, you... I've, got, I've got proof that she was not an adult. Because... Well, all yeah. have the proof. I nah, because Muslim, 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 Muslims will say, right, like, um, where's it gone? So Muslims will say Aisha was a was an adult. It's a but lie. Aisha, when she was married at the time of Muhammad, she was playing with dolls, with right? And look what it says. It says, dolls, so it says, right, um, playing with dolls and similar images it's is forbidden, forbidden but yes. for, for it was allowed for Aisha at the time as she was a little girl. And had not re reached not the age of puberty. puberty. Yes. So that, and, mm, how see, can you follow that man? <laughs> I agree with you. And this is the other problem I'm having. Even if we say that some people matured a little bit earlier, hmm. how far are you going to go? Are you going to go to the age of nine? Because another problem we're having, when you're looking in the Saudi or the Arabian Peninsula, at that time they had a lot less protein. Yes. So the body is not forming as quick like as you would see now. So then that argument... But that's, that's, still, that's still wrong. Because imagine, yeah, imagine, imagine, in this day and age of society, a 54-year-old marries a 14-year-old uh, girl yeah, or puberty. That's, that's still disgusting, man. Yeah. How can you lust over a girl like that? I'd say, yeah. That's you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's so wrong in every way, man. And the thing is as well, right? Some people, they make the argument that he's married her so that when they go into battle, mm. they can record some stories. Okay. Let's just use a bit of logic here. Who is bringing the nine-year-old into battle to record any stories? That's right, Even yeah. Even a 15-year-old is going to have a lot of trouble to record stories. Why are you bringing a nine-year-old and a girl who is playing with her dollies mm. to record stories? No, but still, having sex with a nine-year-old girl. Or let's, let's, say, let's say she was 14 or 15, right? In this the Asian society, it's still wrong. It's still wrong. In America, in a state called... Yeah, take it away. Wait, speak up louder so everyone Sorry can hear. Okay, so this is what is being said here. In some states, he's saying in the US, you're allowed to marry 10 or 12 Okay, girls. I would like to respond so, to that. I want to respond to that. I would like to respond to that. Can I respond? You respond then. Okay, so. He's going to get double the, U, the USA has normalized transgender, has normalized homosexuality. Morally, it's still not right. It's morally wrong to do these things. Okay, whether they have normalized these laws, it's still morally wrong. It is still morally wrong. But I, I'm I don't agree with them. It is morally wrong. This argument is so weak. I'm going to tell you why it's weak. At that time, seven years old yes. was okay. And that's only in the 1880s. Doesn't mean it was morally right though. Yeah, this is a weak we argument. Know, we know it's morally wrong to this day. If but we know it's morally wrong to this day, now, yeah. it would have been the same because our morals never change. Our morals never so change. Ish, ish. Ish. Oh, Isha. Ish, just Ish. ish. You respond, you respond, you respond. What's your name, sir? Huh? Ajmo. What country are you from? Pakistan. Oh, me too. Salam alaikum, brother. Yeah. So, your argument is weak and I'm going to explain very quickly how it's weak. What you're doing, you're trying to bring up a justification because they're allowing it to happen in two, three or four states in the US to say that it's okay for this man Who's married there? That was back in the 1880s. And before that, because people did not, people did not used to go to school. So because they didn't go to school, it's but does it mean it was right? To marry a seven our morals are, are given by God. But brother, our moral, our morality has been given by God. It's written upon our hearts. If it's morally wrong in this day, it must be morally wrong back in the days. Therefore, it was wrong doing these things, and we disagree with it. We disagree with that with these laws. 
they said the age could be, it could be 17 or worse, 19 or, or it could be 6 or... Let, let me ask you a personal question. You have daughters, right? Yeah, yeah. Would you marry your 9-year-old daughter to a man of 51? Not, or to 30? Today, today, no. Would you do okay. it a thousand years ago? I don't know. You, don't, okay. you probably wouldn't. <laughs> this is the problem that we're having here, right? With the understanding that we have today, even back then, yeah. right? Even back then they knew it was wrong. Just because some people did some things which is wrong, you can't use one wrong to justify another wrong. This type of practice mm. is disgusting. And no disrespect to you, brother, but in Pakistan, in some areas... 14 years old, 13 years old. villages, not even 14 or 13, some is going Seven. as young as nine. I heard a story in, Af in uh, Afghanistan, Sorry. right? Should you say that for any country as well? But yeah, yeah. The, issue that, mm, the issue that we're having here is that's done through a religious premise where they're saying that it's like like the most high or the creator has allowed it you see what i'm saying so this is the issue that i'm having with the learning that we have today yeah. right we understand that some could argue maybe the youngest 16 17 but a lot of people are but saying still, they should move 16, it to 18. a nine-year-old girl right they are not physically ready for marriage not mentally yeah. ready for no, no, marriage I'm 18, 18, right? 18 18 years I mean, old 18, okay. 18 let's be clear on that 18. no no the reason why he didn't matter. the reason why the reason why he didn't have an issue is because Muhammad said to Abu Bakr that I had a dream from Allah that um, for me to marry a daughter and Abu, Abu Bakr first didn't agree with it right but because Abu ba uh, Muhammad said he received the revelation from Allah he then agreed with it Someone else. Aisha. No child. No, 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 no. This is wrong, though. Even if she was, it's still wrong. You can't, you can't agree with it. She was six or nine. You can't, ag you can't agree with it because it goes against your religion. She was married, but nine when um, consummation. But there's nine, another yes. issue that I'm having as well. So some make this argument say, oh well, look, he wasn't a bad guy. He waited three hmm. years. But I show you something. For example, we can look at places like Iraq. In some places of Iran, they're doing this, but most Iranians do not agree with this doctrine. No, no. They have a thing which is called thigh, right? Where they're doing some sexual things around the thigh of these young girls. Oh, okay, so caressing, correct. Yeah, Muhammad yes, did that. So they're waiting up to three years. And Muhammad this is, caressed this Aisha's is thigh. Sharia law. <laughs> so, so Muhammad caressed, so before the time um, of Aisha's consummation, Muhammad actually used to caress her thigh. That is written as well. I don't even know my father's name. Mm. Like, like the date of birth. Yeah, yeah. People never kept the date of birth. Mm. So, so, so you better but it, no, you, stop playing no, names here. But it, I, I want, it is written that Aisha was six, she consummated her marriage on nine, and she was playing with dolls. And it's also written a woman cannot play with dolls unless she uh, is at the age of a kid. So yeah, we can see Aisha was a kid at the time. I play with a PlayStation. But this is written your. Stage, you know? But it is written but Aisha. Your argument, okay. You did come in with the let's, let's get it up. Let's get to to support the child marriage. That was your premise. No, I'm just saying that. Brother, look at this, right? This is what I want to show him. So it says. I'm just saying okay, that, so. In, in some states in the 1880s, the age was seven. It doesn't make it right. The, the, the here, brother. Right. I want to show. I want to say so, brother. Brother, please hear this. Hear this. Okay. I love you in Christ, right? So he says, the playing with dogs and similar images is forbidden. But it was allowed for Aisha at that time because she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. So she had not even reached the age of puberty and she was still married to Muhammad. Wait, so you cannot this? say she was an older girl. Uh, Sahih Bukhari, oh, six so months. Sahih. Yes. So Sahih means reliable in Hadith. Yes, it means authentic, yeah, reliable. So then we can't deny this because it's reliable. Mm. Most, you know, the Sunnis agree on Sahih. Mm. But the truth is, you're from Pakistan, right? So you must be, you, you must have like been born a Muslim. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So the truth is, many, I used to be Muslim myself, but yeah, many Muslims. Why are you ex Muslim? I'm ex Muslim, yeah. So why do you call yourself ex Muslim? I. Pardon? Why do you call yourself ex Muslim? Do you want to know why? The reason why we call ourselves ex Muslims is because Muslims believe you cannot, you cannot leave the faith. It's because Muslims believe that one cannot leave the deen. But when we come to Jesus, we realize the power that he has to heal us from this occult. Which is why we say we are ex-Muslims. So you're now going to be worshipping a man who uses the bathroom. A man. We worship Jesus Christ in his divine nature who is God. No, now you're He's going. God. He is God. It's written in Revelation 20 verse 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the ending. In the book of Isaiah 48 verse 12. Yahweh is speaking. I am the first and the last in Isaiah 48 verse 12. 
this is so now you worship a man a who used the bathroom. Yeah. We That's believe God manifested himself through the man and he came and became like us to represent us because we cannot be, we cannot be the substitute to, be, to go to heaven. So Jesus Christ had to come down to be our substitute. He died for your sin. He did, yes. And you believe in a, you believe in a sacrifice as well. You believe, yes, because it is written, Allah would replace the Jews and Christians with the Muslims on the day of resurrection. So Allah would replace the Muslims with the Jews and Christians on the day of resurrection. That's a sacrifice in itself. We don't worship man. We worship God. No, Jesus is man. We worship God. Jesus is man. Jesus is man. We don't, Jesus, brother, Jesus is in heaven. He is fully God at the moment. Nice speaking. Nice speaking. Yeah, it's deflected slightly off. Well, brother, so, yeah, I, I, I speaking to you, right? The reason why people are stuck with Islam is because it goes against their pride and honor. Because you're worried what people will think about you when you leave Islam. But when you come to Jesus Christ, when you realize he is the truth, he can set you free. And he can change your life, my friend. Islam will not get you to heaven, my friend. It will not get you to heaven. You're only going to, you'll only get to heaven by the blood of Christ. By the blood of Christ, brother. India, they have, India, they have We're going to close up now, brother. Close up. They don't have a Christian. Yeah. Close up now.